Orpheus and the Roots of Platonism by Algus Ustavinus Preface by Juan Acevedo, Director of the Matheson Trust The present book is closely related to that famous pre-Socratic fragment about the bow and the lyre where their backstretched or retroflex harmony Palintinos harmonia is said to depict the tense inner cohesion of a diverging unity. The same authority, Heraclitus of Ephesus, employs a Greek pun to show how in the bow itself, one of whose names is Bios, Bios, both the name of life and the act of death coexist. Orpheus as a mythical hero indeed one of the famed Argonauts, stands right at the centre of these junctions. So it is no wonder that this book shares in that harmonious tension, a tension rooted in the nature of the lyre and the bow, whose products may be piercing sounds or slaying arrows. Here we have first a tension within the author, who is intoxicated with his theme, and yet committed to carry out his exposition in a discursive and academic manner. We can almost feel his plight, having in mind the tremendous contemplation of the divine truth and beauty, which would merit either a Bacchic outburst or a supranoetic metaphysical silence. He is forcing himself to compose a scientific treatise. Having heard the music of Orpheus's lyre, he is trying to convey as best he can the unspeakable beauty of those notes in an all-too-earthly human language. Second, as a direct consequence of the first, there is tension for the reader as he tries to follow the argument itself. Strands of myth and mythic lore mix with dense epistemological and metaphysical discussion. Abstruse Egyptian and Babylonian sources stand next to conventional Greek philosophical and 21st century academic references. The thing is said, yet not fully, inadequately expressed with an almost deliberate disdain for exactitude on a plane which becomes redundant in the light of spiritual vision. This book moves uneasily between the apophatic and the cataphatic, trying to say something saying something, hinting at something else, then finally keeping silent, finding itself lost for words, leaving the doors thrown open to a different understanding. Then we find a third sort of tension, springing from the duality of the heart of the subject. Orpheus is a strange hero, one who has music and singing for weapons. He is a seer and tragic lover, yet a crucial figure in the history of philosophy. His place in the history of Greek religion and thought is still, even in specialised circles, something of a riddle, enigmatic and vague. This book, densely packed with references, challenges and subtle invitations, is a recapitulation, or a critical reassessment of ancient and contemporary literature devoted to Orpheus, the paradigmatic itinerant seer, the theologian, the saviour. It gives special attention to his relations with both the Egyptian and the Platonic tradition. At the heart of this book we have a glimpse into the substance, nature and development of the Orphic mysteries. But the reader must be warned. This is not a history of Orphism, and this is no ordinary scholarly monograph. Those who approach this book with respect for the ancient mysteries humbly trying to understand why our ancestors cross cultures unfailingly give to Plato the epithet of divine, divus Plato, or Aflaton al-Ilahi, as the Arabs used to call him, hoping for that epistemic and hermeneutical illumination mediated by the holy light of myths and symbols. Such will find a treasure here, not a wealth of answers to be sure, but a wealth of mystagogic insights and intimations, sparks perhaps of that fiery beauty of truth contemplated by the author. The brief earthly transit of Algus Ustavinus started in Lithuania in 1962. He completed his studies in Vilnius, graduating from the former State Art Institute of Lithuania 
now Vilnius Academy of Fine Arts, where he would eventually become head of the Department of Humanities. Ustavinus was widely respected as a prolific author in Lithuanian and abroad. He was renowned as a translator into Russian and Lithuanian of ancient Egyptian and Greek texts, of traditionalist works by Frithjof Schuon and Martin Lings, and he was active as well as an art critic and author of numerous articles and monographs. A list of his books can be found at the end of this volume. His interest in traditional doctrines would eventually take him around the world and to Jordan and Egypt, where he met living representatives of the prophetic chain of wisdom embodied in the Quran and the Sunnah. These would foster and orient his research projects until his untimely death in 2010. Not long before his passing, and after he had completed this, his final book, he told his wife, I have nothing else to say. As someone who devoted his life to the understanding and cultivation of the divine, Algus Ustavinus must surely be taken as evidence of the ancient saying, Whom the gods love, die young. Like the Homeric epics, the current work is formed by 24 untitled chapters, given the character of the book less informative than mystagogic, less systematic than symphonic. We have preferred to leave the brief chapters as they are, adding titles for ease of reference only in the Tahir Bill of Contents. Five major sections may be discerned in the books. Chapters 1 to 3 deal with inspired madness in general, and with Socratic mania in particular. 4 to 8 with the relations between philosophy, prophecy and priesthood, considering Middle Eastern, Egyptian and Greek traditions in general. Chapters 9 to 12 narrow the scope to the figure of Orpheus as a prophet, considering his place in the Pythagorean tradition and in the development of Greek philosophy. Chapters 13 to 17 touch on some of the deepest aspects of Orphic symbolism, considering the Orphic Bacchaea, the initiatic rites, and way of life, the Bios Orphikos. Chapters 18 to 22 relate all the above to the history of Greek wisdom philosophy, from Homer down to Hermeticism, with special attention to Plato's theories and their Egyptian associations. The book concludes with a chapter on the realities beyond the tomb, 23, followed by a surrender of all arguments and a moving self-disclosure, 24. Silence reigns pregnant with mystical resonance.